Hi, my name is Tom Collins. I'm from Worcester Bosch and I'm here at Hydrogen Home today where we have one of our prototype 100% hydrogen boilers running. And I'm here today to answer a few questions about our technology, try to explain what hydrogen is and what it will mean for us as our heat transitions from fossil fuels to zero carbon energy. Okay, so we're in Low Thornley in Gateshead and I'm here with Alan Hart, who you've met before on the channel, and this is Tom from Worcester Bosch. Tom, you are a hydrogen sort of expert? Yeah, I lead the team developing hydrogen boilers. Cool, brilliant. And the purpose of this video and where we are today is we are in a pair of semi-detached houses which are running on sole hydrogen fuel. Um, there's some building works going on in the background, so there's a bit of background noise. If you hear it, we apologise. But essentially, today's video is just about finding out the benefits of hydrogen, how hydrogen can be deployed in the UK, what schemes are currently active, what the products do, how they work, and just general knowledge about hydrogen. Obviously, it's a hot topic with the gas prices, going greener, energy consumption. This is one of the options um, and we're just here to find out more information. So this house here now is running on hydrogen for its fire, the oven yep. and the boiler. Yep. And this is a boiler that Worcester Bosch have manufactured, designed to run on. It's a hundred percent. Yep, one hundred percent hydrogen. Yep, that's right. Cool. And how the technology compared to gas? Mm -hmm. I would imagine the mechanics of like a combi boiler stay the same. The yep. bit that's different is the way the fuels burn, essentially. Absolutely. So lots of the boiler is there to deal with water, moving water around and transferring heat to water. All of that's completely the same. Yeah. And then at the heart of a boiler is the part that burns the gas and transfers that heat to water. And actually for hydrogen, a lot of that is completely the same as well. The same components are used, like the valve for the gas, the heat exchanger itself. Right. What we've done is we've changed the arrangement of some components. We've uh, changed the burner, for example, and the way we sense a flame. So there are a few small and kind of um, essential differences, but lots of the technology is very similar. And the way we burn gas is the same. In the end, hydrogen is just another gas. Yeah, so it's a gas that's so like if you're, your natural gas boiler now essentially is burning the fuel source that comes into the property yeah. and that's natural gas. Yeah. In this scenario, the only thing that's changed from um, is the, the way the gas is burned inside the boiler, there's some tweaks to technology and yeah. the gas that's coming in is hydrogen. Because yeah. I mean, what the first thing that when we came into the property, that to me looks like a Worcester Bosch 8000. Yep. Um, you know, there's no sort of separate product. There's not like little tanks on the side and fans and alarms. No. It's all very sort of um, relevant to what you would expect in a normal gas boiler now, which, you know, as it's a new technology and it's coming in, that would give engineers and consumers some comfort that from a disruption perspective now, it's literally just a boiler swap. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's not, you're not into changing radiators, changing pipe work. You'd have to have a different meter installed. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And the product itself would be replaced. The product would be replaced. So, the, the, so your current boiler you've got today could burn a blend of hydrogen up to maybe 20%, but it couldn't burn 100% hydrogen. But what we've been able to do is develop technology where a boiler can burn natural gas and then be converted to burn hydrogen. So we've essentially taken a hydrogen boiler and converted it back to gas before it leaves the factory. Right, okay. So, so those boilers, they can go in as a straight swap for a natural gas boiler when, you're, when you replace your boiler normally, burn natural gas until the day the network changes over, and then there's a relatively quick conversion process to then have it burn hydrogen. Is it a mechanical conversion process? You would need an engineer on site to change a couple of components? Yeah, it'd be like having a boiler serviced, that kind of thing. In right. fact, for, for, this, for this, this boiler here, it would be the burner that you'd change, which looks a bit like this in this, this appliance, um, a small restrictor for the gas, which for gas engineers will be familiar. This is what they do when they switch between natural gas and LPG, and a co-plug, which just tells the boilers electronic controls which gas it's burning. Okay, so it's three components. Very simple. And so that's a really interesting point, isn't it? Because there's a lot of talk about gas boiler bands. There's some misleading information there about it's for new build for 2025. Yeah. And I think the target, is it 2035 for domestic homes? 
But as these products come onto the market, as and when, you could install it onto a natural gas property or supply. Yeah. Yeah. So as an engineer, from an upskill perspective, that boiler gets installed as you install it today. Yes. Come the day that you get notification that you're changing to 100% hydrogen, as far as the boiler is concerned, there's a site attendance, three sort of small basic components, and you can burn hydrogen. Yeah, absolutely. That conversion inside the boiler obviously depend from model to model and different manufacturers, yeah. but it's always going to be yeah. a relatively simple and straight and, and quick procedure to swap the appliance over. Yeah. And boilers today, so, you know, we market all of our products um, as blend ready, yeah. but that's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if the grid started to supply your home with 20% hydrogen, 80% yeah. gas, your existing boiler could take that. Yeah. But if you were gonna have a transition to 100% hydrogen, you would need to replace the unit. Yes, that's right. But what we probably see is average life cycle of the boiler, sort of 10 years or so. The next time someone changes their boiler, um, you know, sort of when these come out, three or four or five years, whenever it is down the road, yeah. they would probably opt for a model like this yeah. because it will be suitable for their existing gas supply, which isn't going anywhere for the time being. Yeah. And then if a blend came in, it accepts the blend. And if there's a transition to 100%, it's a modification of the product. Absolutely. And there's a real opportunity here for us to just start changing practice. Like we, back in 2005, we said, okay, all boilers installed now must be condensing boilers. And that gave us that bounce up in efficiency. We could do exactly the same thing now. We could say, okay, all boilers from X date must be hydrogen ready. And then we start changing over that whole park of boilers to being hydrogen ready from day zero. By the time the networks are being converted, the vast majority of properties will already be ready for hydrogen. Have been done. And like from a cost perspective as well, I know that obviously this product isn't on the market now, there is no cost for it, but it's a very familiar product in terms of its architecture to a gas boiler. So we, we would sort of expect prices to be in the region of an existing gas boiler. Yeah. And this, this is what, um, see, for, obviously for, for us as a business and the way we deliver installs nationally, yeah. you know, it's a retrofit solution. So it's a boiler off and a boiler on. Um, if there was a push towards hydrogen, then this would be a relatively straightforward process and costs would be sort of relevant or, or sort of um, comparable to what they are now. Absolutely, yeah. Just in five years, things might be a bit more expensive. You <laughs> think it might be more expensive in five years, but... So things are more expensive tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, there's, and there's a bit of a role here for government to get that volume for hydrogen ready. So if it ends up just having to be a niche, kind of niche top end early adopter technology, then it'd be half of that cost to be low. Yeah. But um, uh, about a year ago, all the major manufacturers uh, wrote through EUA to the government saying that if at the same scale for, for an equivalent market, hydrogen boilers will cost the same as natural gas boilers right. cost now. So that cost impact will be, you know, negligible. Yeah. So, so that's a real opportunity then. That really does mean from the, from the perspective of an installer and from a homeowner, it is just like today. And if, if you've got a relatively modern, or even, no, 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 okay, any combi boiler, any regular boiler on the wall now, yeah. that's too difficult to convert to 100% hydrogen. You would have to have one of these models that's sort of built to take gas, but can go 100%. Yeah, there are some real fundamental differences in the boiler yeah. uh, that, are, that are intrinsic that make them suitable for 100% hydrogen. Right. So if your boiler is 100% 100 hydrogen ready, it will work like a natural gas boiler on natural gas and carry on as happy as pie. But the boilers we've got in our houses today, except this one, they can't burn 100% hydrogen. They will need to be renewed before that conversion happens. Yeah, and the, one of the things well we were talking about earlier was hydrogen as a gas. It comes with a certain amount of, um, like a prerequisite for being dangerous, explosive. I mean, natural gas is explosive, isn't it? Yeah. So um, it's, it's actually three times less calorific than gas, what we're hearing today. Yeah. Um, and, but it burns effectively very similar to the way that gas burns. There's an ignition source, there's oxygen, yeah. and it's a fuel. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of the, the, one of the analogies was the Hindenburg sort of disaster yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with hydrogen. It wasn't hydrogen that brought 
that made that happen, was it? No, so, no, no. <laughs> and, and hydrogen, it's a different gas, right? So you mentioned it's got this kind of a third the calorie value. It's actually got like an eighth the density. It's a really light gas. Yeah. Um, and in lots of ways, that helps make it a safe gas because uh, if, you've got, if you've got a hydrogen escape, it floats straight up. It leaves the area remarkably quickly and it draws in fresh air behind it. Okay. So there are, there are benefits to hydrogen for safety as well as, as, well as costs. The, the main impact of hydrogen is its flame speed is very high. So if you've got a mixture of air and gas, you have to set a spark at one end and watch the flame move through it, it would move faster through hydrogen than it would through natural gas. And that's what makes people think more explosive, more dangerous. But we, you know, that was the question we started with when we did all this development work. We went and did safety absolutely first, baked that into the technology from the start. And then from there, the rest has just been, you know, fairly standard boiler development, to be honest with you. Yeah. So we went and did that work really early on. We've un we understand how hydrogen works. It's a different gas, but if you manage it well, it's, it's, it's safe, as safe, probably in fact safer than natural gas because there's no carbon monoxide risk. What about servicing then? So from an engineer's point of view, yeah. what's the difference with servicing? I would we still be stripping them down? There's gonna be more water in there. So yeah, would that, would that mean water. less yeah. servicing or? No, I, th I think servicing will be very similar. So again, it kind of so sort of works both ways with hydrogen. Um, the, the con it does produce more condensate. Is that going to be an issue with freezing then? Uh, no, actually often more condensate can be better for freezing. As long as it's right. coming out in slugs because you've got a siphon, uh, then actually those, those regular slugs of water moving through are helping to keep the condensate well clear. So we don't think the additional volume of condensate is going to be an issue for freezing. Um, the condensate for hydrogen will be very slightly more acidic than natural gas condensate. But again, actually, when you look at the dynamics inside the heat cell, they're all the same. So no impact. And it's still significantly, it's, it's in between natural gas and oil condensate, for example. So it's not something ridiculously different. And you're going to be testing that with a flue gas analyzer or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your a flue gas analyzer today will work on hydrogen. We use them in our lab. Right, um, okay. But what you're measuring is free oxygen, not CO2. But actually, because our flue gas analyzers are all measuring oxygen in the first place anyway, and that, that CO2 reading we got on the screen, it's, it's calculating from the oxygen. Uh, actually, measuring oxygen is no problem. They do it already, and that's what we need for hydrogen. Would we still be doing stuff like adjusting gas valves then, and things like that? We won't be doing that anymore, would we? I, don't, I, don't, I, I think there's been a trend away from that anyway in natural gas appliances, and I think we'll see that in hydrogen too. Obviously, that sensitivity is... Um, not quite the same for hydrogen because again there's no carbon monoxide risk but i expect that most appliances probably won't have you adjusting the gas valve they'll sit there quite happily as their factory adjusted will it be a lot cleaner then inside the heat exchanger like condensates blocking up with i i think it'll end up being similar um okay. we've, we've seen we've only got a year or two of field experience so far and we're only just getting testing going where you've got real odorized gas that represents what will be going through the networks but the indication so far is that lifetime effects are pretty similar. And what's going to come out of flu is more or less just water vapour, isn't it? Yeah, so you know, obviously the nitrogen that's in the air already that all comes out anyway. Water vapour, um, probably actually not a lot more water vapour than comes out of a natural gas boiler because the additional is going to come out through the condensate yeah. a lot of the time. Um, uh, yeah, so the emissions are very similar to natural gas just without the CO2. So it, I think from a, an environmental perspective, there's a benefit to the product in terms of, granted, there's a supply challenge in terms of making hydrogen green or however you want to produce it. Mm -hmm. But from an, an emissions perspective from the product, there are no CO2 emissions that are coming out of the product. So mm -hmm. if, you know, from a green perspective, from an agenda perspective there, there's a couple of things about natural gas. One of them is a supply isn't endless, is it? And, is, and it's become challenging. Yeah. There's the fossil fuel element of natural gas. Yeah. There's the emissions element of natural gas. Yeah. This product, if the hydrogen going in was clean hydrogen, clean green, whatever the um, terminology is, yeah. as far as the product's concerned, it's not a an emission. It's not emitting emissions. No, it's it's not emitting any CO two emissions. So. Um... You know, I mean, I guess hydrogen is actually just a way of moving energy around that doesn't involve carbon. So, you know, you can have electricity and that electricity can be generated from fossil fuels or it can be generated from renewables. Hydrogen is this zero carbon gas and you can either generate from 
renewable power or from fossil fuel like you can with electricity. The choices are all upstream in how you produce them, of course. Yeah. But what we've done is we've managed to find that way of moving the energy around and using the energy that doesn't intrinsically release any CO2. Brilliant. And then it's, sorry, in terms of products as well, like we have ranges of products now. So we have combi boilers, we have system boilers, we have regular boilers. Yeah. Because it's just a combustion alteration, if you like, yeah. all that existing infrastructure in a consumer's property could stay. So people that have moved away from a system boiler to a combi boiler, people yeah. that have got system boilers can keep them. Whereas on a heat pump scenario, you'd have to have... You, know, you can't have a combi boiler with a heat pump. Yeah. Well, you can as a hybrid, but not as a standalone issue. Um, you have to have a cylinder. Yeah. You, you know, there's all those things, challenges. This is simply, if you've got an existing product on the wall that's already sited in your property, yeah. you can change it. The question I had was around kilowatts. So mm. can you get a 30 kilowatt boiler in hydrogen as you can on natural gas and can you get 50 kilowatt can you get 15 kilowatt like can you still burn at the same yeah rate yes absolutely you can so the same size heat cell can do the same heat load with hydrogen as it can with natural gas right um you know i you know here we are talking about hydrogen as if it's no no change and there's a danger there isn't that people think that we're pushing this kind of do nothing to stick the boiler in you know you don't need to change the system for a hydrogen boiler but of course that's not saying you shouldn't because you know, we're all now really aware, aren't we, that yeah. systems need to be improved, buildings need to be improved, and it's you know, a really urgent issue. And hydrogen shouldn't be an excuse to not do those things. Or what it does for you is it doesn't force the issue at an inconvenient time or kind of constrain the consumer. So um, you've got more choices and flexibility in the way you do it. But we're not saying you shouldn't improve your building system. No. You um, see, it, it, but you just, it, just the boiler isn't making you. Yeah. No, they can do exactly the same as they do today. Well, this would modulate like a modern boiler, so it's yeah. not like um, you're setting it at 30 kilowatt and it's got to stay there, it's going to hunt down. Yeah. yeah. You know, I absolutely agree. We did a video the other day, didn't we, talking about energy savings and about how to improve your efficiency. And there's lots of technology that needs to come through, but there's lots of consumer education, behaviour, um, there's lots of um, improvements to building stock, insulation, and how we think about energy. This is a part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, what i sort of super interested about and, and you know, um, excited about this product is that for a customer, from an, a disruption perspective and from an engineer upskill perspective, from a existing resource of trade skills in the yeah. UK, this is a really good solution. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing great work on it. It feels like from the supply side, there's lots of challenges. We were chatting to the guys a minute ago. I'm sure we'll cover it off in a second, but there was, I always thought that hydrogen was just like really high pressure gas and it can't yeah. go into the existing grid, it's gonna leak. But it's not. No. Um, the existing grid would take hydrogen. Yep. And, you know, we were chatting to Alex before and she said, you know, if it leaks on gas, it'll leak on hydrogen. Um, and if it doesn't leak on gas, it doesn't leak, Won't on, leak hydrogen. on hydrogen. Actually, you know, we, we're aware of these differences in, in hydrogen. You mentioned the uh, energy content, the calorific value being lower. But that's cancelled out by that lower density. So the way the gas moves energy through a pipe is almost identical to natural gas. I mean, you wouldn't have guessed it, would you? But that's how it turns out. Also, the leaks that you see in, in gas systems around your home um, or, or even in the network, they're not driven by the density of the gas. Only, only big leaks are driven by density. Small leaks are driven, but driven by the viscosity, how gloopy the gas is. And actually, hydrogen is a very similar viscosity to natural gas. So again, that's why this leak issue has just disappeared. Yeah. Will, will the pool still put a smell in there then? Yeah, yeah. Smell? Absolutely, yeah, and they're going to use exactly the same smell. So I think HSE's view is that natural gas odorization, that smell that we're used to, is one of the most successful safety controls yeah. ever invented. It's if horrible. you look at the number of times, yeah, the number of times someone reports a leak and the number of times that something actually goes wrong, it's incredibly effective. And, uh, and they, we want to replicate that in hydrogen gas, of course, and that smells programmed in the brains of, you know, 65 million people in the UK. So you don't have to go and reprogram them. They'll use exactly the same smell yeah. in exactly the same concentration. And I, and I think the testing's shown that we're just as sensitive, if not maybe even slightly more sensitive to that smell in hydrogen. So again, 
a direct continuation of what we're doing now works the same way. What about things like gas pipe sizing? Will that be just the same? Will that need to be slightly bigger? Yeah, I, th I think um, what we're anticipating is that we'll, the industry is aiming that you'll be able to reuse the existing pipe work if it's in good condition and it's sound as it is. Um, that might mean that inside the home, instead of a one millibar drop, you're looking at maybe a 1.5 millibar pressure drop to an appliance. But that's all still being, you know, those details oh, right, being yeah. thrashed out by the industry. But yeah, yeah, that, like I said, that energy content, or rather it's called the Wobby Index. Yeah, yeah. That property of gas is so similar to natural gas that it's all the same ballpark. Very it's all going to be very similar. Yeah. Excellent. That's brilliant. Well, really appreciate that, Tom. That's, it's given us some uh, really good information. Hopefully customers have learned a lot from that. It's great to have Alan here to understand it from an engineer perspective and how, you know, I think this feels like a great solution. It's exciting, isn't it? It's exciting. It's exciting. I mean, exciting. I know it's a bit underwhelming because it's just a normal house with a normal gas boiler and it looks no different, but the concept behind it, I think it's brilliant. Like for the UK housing stock, if we can deliver the fuel source, you know, correctly, Yep. and in line with the renewable target, then these products, similar price point, similar application, installation similar, it feels like an absolute winner. Um, yep. Really, really impressed. So appreciate all your time there, that's been great. I think we're gonna have a quick look around the house now. We'll get some more shots and hopefully we can catch five minutes of Alex and talk about the grid and how they're delivering this gas into, into UK homes. So fantastic. Great. Brilliant. Good to talk to you. Yeah. Thanks thanks Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I'm Alex, I'm the Hydrogen Home Coordinator and I'm here at Hydrogen Home with guests from Muster Bosch and Heatable to talk about hydrogen appliances and how they'll look in the future. This project, Hydrogen Home, came from the High for Heat programme and it's funded by Northern Gas Networks, Cadent and Bayes and the High for Heat programme was looking at how hydrogen can be used as a domestic fuel so all the appliances that are showcased in these houses are here for the purpose to prove that hydrogen can be used as a domestic fuel. The hydrogen village trials are only a couple of years away and they will be starting in 2025. After that we'll be looking at town trial which will see up to 10,000 properties converted to 100% hydrogen. There's also policy decisions currently being made around the hydrogen blending which we should see a result for by the end of next year. Natural gas causes about 30% of the carbon emissions that go into our atmosphere day to day. Changing to hydrogen, which produces no emissions at the point of being burnt, would really dramatically help with the climate change problem that we've got at the moment. <laughs>